Thank you, Doc. Uh, I want to indicate that I did get the program and I was allocated 20 minutes to the presentation. So okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to start that. <laughs> <laughs> that was allocated to me. Okay, but my name is there on that screen and my title is a system dynamics model to improve productivity in a welding intensive industry. The topics that I'll be covering in my presentation is the introduction and background, program statement, the literature, methodology, solution to the problem, contribution, and our close. Okay. South Africa is experiencing a 40-year gap uh, in technology, uh, more especially in rail manufacturing. And the economic development policy emphasizes that uh, we need to embark at least at localization so that we can resuscitate this manufacturing industry. And one strategy to address that will be for the country to embark on a process of creating enterprises which will enable us to create jobs and grow the economy. And to address that, Givela was given a project of producing at least 600 trains. As you can see, this slide is exactly what you see there. Uh, if I don't unpack it fully, you can go and look at the slide there on that uh, pamphlet there. So as the response from the previous presenter was, she said they are not on target. So this creates a serious problem. As you can see, the schedule, I don't think they are just there on that eight trains. Phase one of this project started just in 2014, and those 20 trains were produced in Brazil. Phase two has to include at least 50% of local components and parts, and that was to produce eight trains here in South Africa and those parts. And then phase three should include at least 70% of local components and will run from 2019 up until 2035. The focus of my research was mainly in the production of an underframe. So the slide there just gives you the breakdown of the work content that has to be done by Girella. Those are the 600 trains on top there. And for each and every set of a train, we've got six rail cars, two train cars plus four motor cars. And the main components in each and every rail car, <coughs> number one, we've got one under frame, then a roof, two side assembly, and two end frames. And as I've said, the focus of my study is in the manufacture of the under frame. On the under frame, those are the components, two under frame center floors, two under frame end floors, two side cells, and a panel. And as it was indicated earlier, the materials used to manufacture this specific component, which is a base component in each and every rail car, is mostly your stainless steel as well as match steel. Those are the two types of materials that we use in the manufacture of bag. Uh, unpacking the work content involved in the manufacture of an underpray, that gives you just a overview of what is happening with each and every component. Please, there is a total of 103 hours needed to produce at least one under three. Just to give you a background. Now, our problem statement, Givela is busy with ramping up production and based on the learning curve studies they've conducted, that learning curve rate stands at 1.799. And this is a serious problem. If we look at the amount of work to be done, 600 trains in 10 years, 3,600 real cars in 10 years. It's a huge amount of work that will be done. And the manufacture of railway vehicles is highly intensive welding operations. And in manufacturing, welding is considered to be a special process. So as I've indicated, we are experiences seeing a huge amount of shortage in terms of welders in the country. Actually, engineers are short in supply in South Africa. 
And most of those engineers were uh, practicing in, out there in industry. They either don't have theoretical uh, background, they're just working there because of experience. So that is a problem for us. If we just look at the enrollment statistics from our Tivel College, because that's where our artisans are coming from. If you look at the third bar, which is occupational qualifications, in 2015, the country only enrolls just over 20,000 uh, occupational qualification students. These are with the other categories. And you can see 20,000 is just a drop in an ocean if you look at all those other numbers. So that is evident that we've got a problem in that specific area. As I've indicated, uh, the manufacture of railway cars or rail cars is very intensive, but in this specific case, for the manufacture of an underframe, we are mainly use three assembly methods. TIG welding, MIG welding, as well as resistance spoke welding. Okay. And coming to the method used to solve the problem that is on hand, the manufacturing perspective of productivity was adopted in this case, and that is by Shah Hidrul and Sahid. And basically, for those who are in industrial engineering on, or operations, they know basically that the way we define productivity is by using a simple form which says this is the ratio between output and input. So I'm taking you back to the basics because we can't do this without looking back to those basics. So I've adopted the Cobb Douglas form which says production is a factor of the capital invested in producing the goods, the labor that, that we use to transform our input, the effect of research and development, and the factors associated with motivation as well as job satisfaction. That is your FWE there. And how we define productivity, <coughs> that formula there, productivity is equal to that beta, which is a constant, depending on the potential of your manufacturing process variable. And the denominator there, the numerator plot there, so it's the sum of the revenue of the output, and then we divide that by all the inputs elements of the firm. And they were looking of your raw materials, your labor hours, your machine hours, your factors related to motivation and job satisfaction, then your manufacturing logistics, then your energy used in the production process, and then the effect of research and development, which is why we're here. So your alpha is your dimensional channel scope coefficient in this specific formula. And uh, it depends on how capable your inputs are in producing your goods. So that is what I've adopted in this specific uh, uh, solution. This is just one part of the solution development. I've got three other parts. And in this case, I chose to look at the production system and System dynamics modeling was used in this case. This is a methodology for studying and managing complex feedback systems, and a multi method simulation model will be used here. That is an agent based simulation. Of which the advantage of this specific simulation modeling technique is that you can look at the problem quantitatively as well as qualitatively. Going back to the basics, these formulas are used to generate uh, the much more important variables. The very first formula there is our hourly production rate, which is determined by looking at your annual demand. Then we divide by the number of working weeks available in a year, multiplied by the number of shifts in a day, and then multiplied by the number of hours in a shift. Then to take our hourly production rate into our cycle time, TC there, we multiply our line efficiency by 60, that is just converting your hours into minutes. And then we divide by the hourly production rate. Then we use the last formula there to determine the desired number of workers in a specific line. In this case, we're looking at the manufacturing of the underframe, just that second, under the core cut body shell manufacturing. And that formula says the total work contract divided by your 
cycle time. All these key variables were used in the development of a match system dynamics model. To start with the solution to the problem, I started with the development of a causal loop diagram, which is not indicated here. Then I developed the stock and flow diagram, which you can see on the board. Just to unpack the diagram, <coughs> key variables on this model, I've got a parameter there, which is our production time, which influences the production capacity, which is an inflow, and the number of underframes produced indicate the stock. And while the underframes produced are moved into the downstream workstation, then that creates an underframe gap, meaning that you have to produce more underframes, and that is basically influenced by the dynamic variable there, which is our desired number of underframes. So, just to unpack that diagram that I spoke of, that causal that I showed you indicates that the demand by the downstream work station drains the inventory, which is the underframe, and the difference between the desired inventory level and the real inventory level is the inventory gap, and in order for us to run the simulation, another variable, which is the production rate, was introduced. To look at the problem of the welders, because this is all about looking at the capacity level, number of welders that are there in the uh, manufacturing of the underframe, any logic was used to develop this continuous uh, model. So what is happening on the floor, Develop hires what we call semi-skilled welders, those are the welders that are, have gone through the trade test. Then they train them so that they can qualify as artisans. So that is what the model is saying. So what the model is saying is saying, all what we need to do is to go back to look at our formula that W is equal to T, TWC, which is the total work content divided by the cycle time, and determine the desired number of welders. I just have to come closer here. We determine the num total number of welders required in that section. And of course, that is influenced by the total work content required for the manufacturing of the other frame, which I've said 103 hours are required to do at least one other frame. And it is also influenced by the cycle time. Then for that, Givella has to hire the semi-skilled welders. There is a hiring process here. Then this hired people becomes the number of semi-skilled welders within the company. But as and when we are hiring, people are leaving due to different reasons. But I've been told that in Givella people don't resign. <laughs> when they get into the system, they stay there. I don't know the reasons behind that. Maybe is because of the issues of job satisfaction. I don't know. But while they get in there as semi-skilled welders, they go under training so that they can, they can become artisan welders. Because by developed standards, whether you've got a trade test or not, you have to go through their training so that you can be qualified according to the Alstom standards. The model continues and then we will have another stop there which is artisan welders, then they will become expert or experienced -like, uh, 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 welders. And all these flows and stocks determines the total number of welders that we need for that specific uh, section. So that is our any logic model here, and I want to just take this mon moment to show you or run the model that was developed so that you can just have a feel of how this any logic works. So, there is my model, the model is running. At any specific point in time, it will show you the level of semi-skilled welders, artisan welders available in the company. So to verify and validate the model, I've run the very same model under another software that we call Stellar. And in Stellar, I did come to a conclusion, these are the results that I got from Stella, and the results just indicate that the number of welders, actually at Zen welders in blue, 
will stabilize over a period of 10 years at an average of 8, and the number of semi skilled welders in dotted red lines will stabilize at least at 2, giving us the total number of welders required for that section. Of course, this model can be expanded to the whole uh, process of manufacturing. This is just one component in that uh, specific uh, CBS section. So we can expand it to everything, but you know the manufacturing of train consists of at least 10,000 parts. That is the 15 minutes clock. <laughs> um, the result of this study will assist, of course, the company in developing policies. I've already indicated that this model is done at this level, high abstraction model. So policies in recruitment and development policies, and of course, ultimately this will lead to an improved uh, 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 performance in terms of productivity. And so, future work, I'm going to look at including agents in the very same model, and I ex anticipate that I'll be able to produce a general paper as well as a conference paper, so that I can bring money to the department, because this is all about generating funds. <laughs> and, and, and this will form part of my doctoral thesis, and uh, acknowledgement standard there for each and every presenter, TUT and GIREL, and NRF program. And thank you. That, that, that is for Bivella to respond. Uh, <laughs> the issue of material, I, what, what I know from the research point of view is that for everything you do, there is a, an alternative cause of action. So I want to believe that there is a reason why they chose stainless steel and mild steel for this specific component. Remember, this component that I'm looking at here is a base component. So, and I think my steel and stainless steel will be fit for, for, for purpose in this case, but whether they are looking at other materials, I don't know, maybe it will be for Givella to I'm not looking at materials here. I'm looking at the usage of all the inputs to produce output. How efficient is that process? What I wanted to do with that was to use the primary data that I got as inputs to this model. And if and see if the model is doing what it's supposed to be doing. And, and, and that's why I got to use the... Actually, I, I could have ran the model on any logic and get the results, but I just want to test, it, test if the results I'm getting from any logic are exactly the same as the ones are. I'm getting from stand. But whether it is right to do that is for professors. <laughs> um, I think my comment will be almost generic. I think uh, a lot of people are talking about, um, every time when you talk about any new project and um, manufacturing activities, we always talk about um, the lack of skills, and and I, I and I will just throw things in the air. We will decide how we catch it. Um, the first thing is that when we talk about whether we will qualify people or not, it also goes to that there is an exposure that you will never know unless you are hired by a particular company. So let's say you go to school, uh, you are trained at um, either TVET or TUT. You go and get your, your work exposure, you qualify, or whether you qualify as an engineer or, a, or an artisan, but you will never know the, the, the particular aspects of a company unless you are employed. So when we're talking about skills gap, we have to um, maybe put those levels to say the skills gap that we are talking about, are we talking about the generic skills that talks to what you should have received at varsity or at college level? or we are expecting people to be performing at a, at a, at a, at a, at a company level. Um, generally, if we're talking about the issue of artisan, you will know that in the past three, four, five years, there's been an influx of money 
that has been thrown into developing artisans, right? Um, as it stands now, you can go into um, the body called NEM. We are we we also now producing a lot of artisans that do not have jobs. Um, and the question is, the skills gap that we're talking about, is it at university level or it's at the quality level that company expects you to be performing at? And so for me, I think that is one of the challenges that we have from industry versus what the universities are able to provide. Um, and the other thing it would be, um, I know that you've had some interaction with some of our colleagues. Um, I think just for you to, the model, the, 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 the academic aspect, for me, I think it's, it's okay. But I'm just looking at um, the problem that you may decide that you are trying to solve for growth, for example. That MO2 ability, because that is where these things are done. I'm, I'm still struggling to understand what could be the, this is the business aspect, it may not be the academic, academic aspect. What are we trying to, to solve? I will try to solve the, 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 the rate of, of production. Do we feel that the guys that are doing the underframe are not doing it at the right pace? Do we feel that the quality is compromised? Um, what are the things that we're trying to address on the line? Uh, and I think maybe that's where we'll stop. Um, the issue on the mod itself, because my interest is, does it actually take into consideration the variability of things like automation and added to your line balancing? Can you actually consider, though you look only at the undercarriage and you said it could be expanded to the whole does it actually allow you to bring in that variability in that course? Yes, in this case, what is happening in the manufacturing of the underframe, there is no robotics. The work is just highly labor intensive. So, so hence, if you are to be able to expand it to the rest of the processes, yes, then it can allow for... It can. Okay. It can, you can adjust it to that. Because that will influence the, the, the production capacity. Mm -hmm. If you put in more robotics, then, then 